So the presentation today is entitled How to Analyze a Stock in 60 Seconds or Less. And if you guys have read uh, a lot of the things I publish, if you've watched my nightly videos that I get, I'll get a lot of great feedback from that, you guys know I dig fairly deeply on stocks, right? And I don't expect all of you to be as excited about digging through a company's financial statements as I get, right? I'm not expecting you to understand, uh, you know, the debt to equity ratios and how to look at free cash flows and return on equity and all these kinds of things. So I'm always on the lookout for tools that make this easier for you guys that will still give you a way to view stocks from a value proposition because you guys have heard me say hundreds of times the same stock can be a wonderful investment at one price and a terrible one at another. Okay, so there's different calibers of stocks. There's quality stocks that are always profitable that continue to grow um, you know your blue chips your coca colas your procter and gambles and then there are kind of junky stocks that may be losing money or make money and lose money so even once you split those two groups apart there are still good prices to pay for stocks and bad prices to pay for stocks okay netflix was a great buy at fifty or sixty bucks a share buying it up here in the four hundreds is incredibly risky so the tool you're looking at here uh, is something produced by a guy named Nick Krakman, who is, I think it's Krakman, sorry Nick if I mis mispronounced your last name, uh, who's out of the Netherlands, and this guy is an absolute freak when it comes to market analysis and analyzing the fundamentals of companies, and he gets even more in depth in stuff than I do, and he's created this very interactive spreadsheet that does a phenomenal job of not only showing you what is important about a stock and a quick a uh, quick glance at the quality of that stock, but also where the price lies relative to what the stock is inherently worth. And that is the most important thing you need to know as an investor. Not only is this a good company, but what am I getting for what I'm paying? Is it a good price for the stock or a bad price for the stock? So I came across Nick's stuff. I've been using his product for a while. Uh, it's got a lot of different information within the spreadsheet, but... Nick, if you want to mic up, tell me if you would really quickly, and then I'll let you kind of get into this sheet. You can show them how it works and the benefits for them, and I'll kind of you know show what I use in it. Uh, tell me about what made you start this, what made you, how long it took you to build this thing, this resource, and kind of what was your motivation behind it? Uh, hi, Ross. Hi, uh, everyone. I uh, hope you all can hear me. Um, yeah, what was my motivation to... Um, to start building this spreadsheet, well, actually, uh, like you just explained, as a value investor, obviously you look for companies that are great, that have great fundamentals, uh, but are also trading at a discount price. Um, to find that out, take, obviously, takes a uh, well a whole lot of time to analyze uh, dozens of stocks which are trading on the stock market. So, uh, I was using several spreadsheets, uh, entering data manually. Uh, took a lot of my time, um, yeah. So I then came uh, up with the idea to actually combine those spreadsheets and automate them. I found out about a function in uh, Google Spreadsheets that actually allows you to uh, draw in data from uh, from online sources, and that's um, when I uh, came up with the idea to draw in financial data from sources like uh, Yahoo Finance, Google Finance. Uh, reliable financial sources, um, yeah, and and the uh, yeah, so that that's actually basically it. I, I I came up with it. I started building it. I used it uh, uh, for my uh, for my own investing purposes uh, for for years actually, uh, and it it was a great success. So I thought maybe there are other people interested in uh, doing the same thing because I noticed it was working for me. I made great returns with it, and. That's uh, that's the the start of value spreadsheet. Actually, I um, started making it more professional, um, make uh, and and then I set up the the company to allow other people to benefit from it as well. All right, well, Nick, let's go ahead and get into it. Everyone in here, look, I know you guys' time is very valuable. I appreciate you joining us here. Nick, why don't you, I'll put it over to you. You can take over the screen share, show your chart, and if you would, kind of walk them through this this spreadsheet. Well, kill your mic real quick, Nick. Yeah. All right. Walk them through this spreadsheet, how the different th functions work, uh, kind of how you use it, and then once you do that, we'll start looking at some stocks, and for everyone in the room, we'll take the companies you want to take a look at 
and Nick and I will kind of run them through the sheet. We'll show you how they score, how they rank up, and how we would evaluate these stocks. Nick, I'm going to go ahead and give it to you uh, if you want to take over screen share. And you can uh, share the spreadsheet on your end. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, are you seeing my screen? Yep, I think you are now. Um, yeah, so let's uh, do a quick run through of uh, what, what, what it is that you see here. Um, this is a value spreadsheet, the dashboard. Um, this is a, a very complete overview of, um, actually a simplified overview of all the powerful features behind uh, this spreadsheet. I mean, it, it, this spreadsheet goes beyond just retrieving data and performing some calculations, it actually interprets and analyzes the data for you. And this dashboard that you're seeing right now actually aggregates all the most important uh, results of that analysis and shows it in one um, clear view. For example, what you see is a, a score. Um, it's a fundamental score. It's the, based on the uh, analysis of the fundamentals of the company. It's a flexible scoring system. Uh, you can actually, because the thing is, um, we're all value investors, or at least that, that's actually what the spreadsheet is aimed at, value investing, um, the, the strategy of the, of the investment grades, you know? And still, everyone has their own little things to it. Everyone has their own, um, um, their own system, their own ideas. So, for example, if you think that debt to equity is less important than return on equity, you just simply lower the weight of that particular um, ratio and that's how you can actually customize the scoring system of the spreadsheet to your own you know, personal strategy. Nick, uh, hey, here. Nick, sorry to cut you off. So are you saying like if they're more, if they're more growth stock guys, if they're looking for up and coming growth stocks, they want, you know, a stock that's going to double or triple, they can adjust these weightings here to find stocks yes. that score higher based on that? Absolutely. I mean, this this is the the weights I use for my particular um, strategy uh, of value investing. But some people are more indeed, like you say, they are more focused on growth uh, rather than um, deep value stocks. So they can actually adjust the weights here. They can even re completely remove some of these factors out of the equation by uh, putting the weight to zero. Um, so yeah, it's actually a very highly customizable. Um, that's also one of the benefits of using a, a spreadsheet system compared to an online tool um, because everything is customizable. Um, many investors use spreadsheets and are familiar with it. So people can just, uh, who use the spreadsheet can actually uh, edit every single function in the spreadsheet so it's really customizable. Um, yeah, here on the right you see another very important uh, aspect uh, Ross already highlighted. Uh, it's the intrinsic value estimates. Uh, there are three models uh, the spreadsheet uses. Uh, the price of earning uh, calculation, uh, discounted cash flow, and a return on equity valuation. Uh, all three models are different and complementary. So while none of the models is perfect because it remains a, an estimate, intrinsic value calculations are not based uh, or can be calculated on uh, two, two decimals, two decimal places. So this is, at least uh, using three models actually uh, gives you a very, very good idea of what, where the intrinsic value of a company, the true value of a company actually lies. And uh, what happens next is, for example, if we're looking at Apple right now, we see it scores uh, relatively good on the fundamentals. It's a strong company. What you see is, for example, the, the growth rate for the next five years is uh, relatively low, and the asset turnover change is um, the adjustment is bad. And that's because, yeah, they, they are slowing down a little bit, but they're still a very healthy company. Then if we look at the, the next step, obviously, once you found a solid company, is to see if it is actually uh, trading for an interesting price to, to buy. So you, comp you, look, you, um, you look at the three intrinsic value estimates and you see that in the most um, yeah, conservative scenario, the, the value sh 
is around a thousand dollars estimated value intrinsic value if we then look at the current share price it's actually around 500 which means that it is significantly undervalued at the moment so this this gives you an idea of how this process this process uh, quickly works so Nick so again so, hey Nick sorry sorry to cut you off I just wanted to look at that in the in the price oh, well. in the price info tab so what you've got there you you kind of average those three to give a rough value of what it's worth. You show how much yeah. it's undervalued or overvalued, and then what yeah. is that? What is the max purchase price? Tell me how that works and and how that's calculated. Yeah, yeah sure. Um, actually, uh, in in the inputs tab, I can can go there. Um, you can fill in at the top here your desired return on investment. Um, Amongst other things, you can also fill in your desired margin of safety, the discount rate. These things are used throughout the spreadsheet uh, in different calculations. This is just to, so you can customize it further to your own liking. So in this case, my desired return on investment is 20% per year. Um, if we then look at the intrinsic value that is calculated, the, esti the average estimate, and uh, we want to have 20% per year, uh, that means that we should not um, buy it above eight hundred and fifty dollars because then um, we would no longer have uh, twenty percent per year uh, gain uh, well yeah so that that's how it works it it, um, it gives you a price which uh, gives you a, a very clear point above uh, below which you can buy the stock to uh, Earn your desired return on investment, and if you purchase above that price, uh, the chances of you getting that return uh, diminish because the lower the price, obviously, the better. Okay, and tell me about on the fundamental yeah. side. Where um, you've got the points. Can you tell? Can you tell us how how those points are calculated based on you know whatever uh, quantitative values are underneath that? Uh, yeah, absolutely. The uh, let's see. So yeah, this is actually a summary um, of the fundamentals. We we got the data coming in, financial statements, for example. Uh, you you see here the income statement, balance sheet, cash flow statement. Um, this is then analyzed. This data and all the ratios that we get are analyzed. Fundamental analysis is taking place. This is actually a really powerful feature. Like I said before. Many tools stop at retrieving data and just showing it to you and overwhelming you with a whole lot of data and then leaving you to it. This spreadsheet actually interprets the data for you and here it tells you um, what is good, what is not so good about this company and why. The why is really important. For example, you see uh, return on equity, uh, it's good if the return on equity Accuracy is consistently high. The company capital is invested profitably. Um, just things like that. It, it makes it really uh, easy for you to judge um, which points are worth looking into more. Uh, are they really as bad as is the SM turnover change really as bad as uh, is shown here? Uh, because it means that uh, the company is becoming less efficient at using its assets to generate revenue. Uh, all of this is then transported over to the dashboard again, uh, which is just, a, like I said, a summary. It gives you a quick overview of uh, well, points for extra, which needs some extra attention. And uh, it's, it's simply that the, the score behind it is simply based on the fact that the maximum score is 100, and then the weight assigned to it, and um, if it's good, the, it gives more points. If it's bad, it gives less points. And that's how the score is calculated. So I like that. And what I like about your analysis tab is for people who aren't extremely familiar with, you know, what is debt to equity, what is asset turnover, you've got really nice explanations there that kind of explain it. So if they're still in a learning phase, it's showing them like next uh, PE ratio, for example, saying the company's becoming more efficient, able to increase prices, and it shows 
you know, this means they don't have risk of bankruptcy, and this means they're doing X, Y, Z with their funds. So that that's really nice, I think, uh, for anyone who's not incredibly familiar with these terms. They'll quickly be able to read this in layman's, you know, language. Says, okay, this is why this is good. This is why this is bad. Now we've got a couple of questions, if you don't mind, really quick, Nick. Um, yeah. Nancy's asking how all the data gets entered, and Nancy, it's it's pulled automatically online. So when you put the stock ticker sim, when you put the ticker symbol in, is he's automatically pulling this data online. So you don't have to input anything except the, the ticker symbol. Um, yeah. Now another question: When the Michael says when the variables contradict each other, how does the summary treat these when providing uh, a, a summary score? It's just the, the um, different weights, right? Yeah, I mean uh, that. That's in, in the end the weights. Dep um, it depends on the weights how uh, big of a part it uh, it plays in the overall score. Yeah. And these rankings, the score is out of a hundred, right? So the closer to a hundred, the better. The yeah. lower, the worse. Do you have like yeah. a minimum score you'd be willing to invest? And in? is there kind of like a break point? It's good stock versus bad stock. Um, well, the thing is, uh, it, it's always um, a, a, a difficult uh, thing to. Put a uh, specific number there, but I'm, I'm definitely looking uh, at an eight or higher. Okay. Perfect. All right. Go ahead. Show, uh, continue. Sorry to interrupt you there. If you want to show us the rest of it, you're doing great. Uh, yes, yeah, sure. Um, one other um, really uh, interesting feature is the the graphs. It uh, makes um, graphs for ten years of data, uh, ten years worth of data. And what you see here for Apple uh, is that it's currently trading at the lowest PE in the of the last 10 years which is uh, an interesting fact supported by the fact that um, we saw that Apple is currently trading significantly below the calculated uh, intrinsic value estimates um, so yeah that's supported by the low PE currently uh, what we also see here uh, the net margin for Apple has been increasing for years and years, and now there's this sudden dip. You see the same thing happen here with the book value per share, which is a really important indicator for uh, if, if you're looking at a healthy company, you're looking for an increase in book value. This is an exponential increase, and now you see that it's slowing down a little bit. Of course, Apple is now buying back shares, um, increasing its dividend just to uh, kind of offset those, um, yeah, that slowdown in growth. Um, so that's really interesting to see that here in this in these graphs. It gives you a, a good idea of uh, where the comp company company uh, is coming from and where it is heading. Uh, yeah. Then we have obviously the um, the three valuation models. This is the PE valuation. Uh, it uses um, uh, it, it it sort of projects the the price to the um, sorry yeah it, it sort of projects the price in uh, five years into the future and then discounts it back to today's um, uh, yeah to today um, not I'm not sure if ev everyone will be uh, familiar with uh, di uh, discounting uh, prices but uh, this is uh, the, the way to do it using a discount rate to uh, project it five years into the future then uh, discount it back to today uh, there, if you, if you want explanations uh, on the on my blog, I've, I've written about all of this. Uh, there's a discounted cash flow, the which uh, the discounted cash flow model, which is the the um, yeah the 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 most often used uh, valuation model, probably. It um, uh, yeah the discounted cash flow. It, it it it's basically a value based on how much money can uh, we extract from this business in the coming years, and we assume that, uh, for the calculation reasons, we have to assume that uh, after 10 years the company would sell off all of its assets, and based on that, uh, we arrive at this value. Uh, obviously, it's an assumption. The company will probably not sell all of its assets after 10 years, and that's why we have three different valuation models, because not all of them have some you, you just need to make assumptions to some, at some points and that's why we have three valuation models so um, they offset each other and that gives you a really clear idea of where the value, the intrinsic value um, approximately lies. Uh, then there's the final one is the return on equity valuation model. Uh, again this is this might not be a very uh, 
many people might not be familiar with this uh, model. I, um, I've been using it uh, successfully for a couple of years now. It's, uh, it's really interesting how these three models do seem to correlate a lot. And so it gives you a really good idea again of, uh, of the intrinsic value. And then the final uh, tab here, which is actually a really, really interesting one. Um, I've um, been talking to um, the, the author of, uh, of a really cool book, It's Burnings That Count. And in that book, uh, several um, methods are described to identify whether a stock is manipulating its earnings or not, and one of the uh, one of the very uh, interesting things is that the companies that uh, have been um, misreporting their earnings, what you see there is that earnings increase, but defensive profit, which is which is actually similar to uh, free cash flow, uh, is decreasing. So you have free cash flow which is um, steady or decreasing while net income is increasing. This is unsustainable. This is a big sign of trouble for the company because this, unsustainable. You need to have cash coming in in order to have profits. And uh, so this is a very interesting way to, uh, well, it, it sort of highlights, uh, it also shows it in the dashboard then. If, if that is the case, it shows in the dashboard, and you can have a look at this uh, tab to see if there are actually uh, serious problems ahead. Um, you see that the debt repayment period, which is the period, um, you can see it here. Like Ross just said, uh, also people with, uh, who don't have uh, that much expertise yet uh, regarding value investing, there are all these little tool tips which explain all the different, um, yeah, terms in detail. So this is the debt and payment period, how many years it will take to pay off all that with defensive profits, so with free cash flow. Nick, if you um, would, I think Apple, I, hey Nick, uh, sorry, I think your mic I think your mic blanked out for a second. Would you mind repeating the parts about the earnings power there and also tell people um, where the data comes from and how, how trustworthy the data is. Yeah, sure. Um, is my mic working now? Yeah, you sound good. Go ahead. Okay, cool. Yeah, so what I what I said here about the earnings power, uh, first I might say where the data is coming from. All the data is coming from the financial statements. So the financial statements uh, come from uh, trustworthy sources like uh, Yahoo Finance and Google Finance. Um, and that data is then uh, further processed into the um, uh, yeah, the, the, the data you see here on the screen. So the data comes from reliable sources, and um, that's, I don't make these numbers up. These numbers are uh, they are simple calculations based on the financial statements that uh, are drawn in uh, from online sources, uh, like I just mentioned. Uh, so what I explained about earnings power here is that it's a way to identify in advance if a stock might get into financial trouble because they might have been uh, doing some earnings manipulation. Uh, what if earnings, net earnings, are increasing while free cash flow or defensive profits are decreasing? Uh, this is very, this is unsustainable in the long run, and it um, will lead to uh, imminent bankruptcy actually if it, if it continues too long. So in the dashboard, you will see a uh, red sign red flag saying bad and you can take a look at this tab and then uh, identify if there are serious problems and uh, make your judgment if it's uh, worth uh, taking that risk or not. So you're yeah. saying that, so, Nick, you're saying that accrual profit is the net income per share and defensive yeah. profit is free cash flow per share, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, these are just uh, the terminology, this is just the terminology that was used in the uh, It's Earnings That Count uh, book. Um, the, where all of this is explained, uh, also with the uh, very striking examples of uh, Enron and uh, you know the the the, the classic examples, uh, and and then he shows with data that this is actually a very very good indicator of if whether a company uh, will get into financial trouble in the near future. So yeah, but the, yeah, this is actually net income 
so it says here different word for earnings per share uh, and defensive profit uh, different word for free cash flow actually and um, then uh, finally here on the right we have the ultimate set score calculation which is an uh, often used indicator uh, also for the same reasons to see whether or not a company is uh, heading for bankruptcy or not a score uh, below 1.8 would suggest that, uh, as you can see, Apple with a score of 5 is, uh, is in the clear. <laughs> They're doing great financially. So yeah, actually, I think uh, we've uh, been through all the, um, through all the different tabs, uh, shown all the functionality. So um, Nick, if you would, like, so how many of you guys took my, I did a value investing 101 course last year, I've done a stock scanning class, how many of you guys remembered when I showed you how to do the discount cash flow and how we looked at what the company's making, how we're going to project that out going forward, discount those numbers back to today, and come up with a value for the stock. Nick, would you show the discount cash flow evaluation tab there? Um, there it is. So what you're looking at here. Obviously, the top line total cash, so what they're sitting on right now in cash, that's part of it. Free cash flow is what they're bringing in uh, each year that you know is essentially cash to the owner. If you own the whole business, that's what you'd walk away with. And then down below in the calculations, you're showing what those figures are projected to be in the years going forward, what those yeah. numbers are worth today, and you add yeah. them all up, divide by number of shares, and get a total value for the company or a total value per share. Um, yeah, that's so, exactly and then right. you, so the other two value, the PE valuation and the return on equity, are two other variations of this, guys. Remember, you know, there's lots of ways to, to value a stock, and Nick's done a great job of putting all three in here. But every hedge fund manager and portfolio manager is, is inherently familiar with discount cash flow, return on equity, and earnings valuations. And depending on which one they use, that's where they're getting what they think a company is worth. It's not as complex as Wall Street would like you to think it is. It's not a system where you've got to have you know, a, a, a degree in mathematics. You have to have worked for NASA to manipulate these databases. It's, it's essentially pretty simple once you have it laid out correctly. And so I, I think that's great that you've got the, the summary there. You kind of give an idea that, that these valuations that everyone's using, say it's worth anywhere from 1000 to 1500 and you can choose to be as safe or as risky as you want based on those numbers. Yep. Yeah, that's, uh, that's exactly the idea, uh, to have... Um, to just offer the the basic, uh, or actually not basic, it's it's in-depth analysis of a stock in a few seconds, and then people can uh, easily one overview see the results of that analysis and look at the points that need some extra attention, and that makes it really a big time saver. Now, one other thing you've got here. Um you know, we're we're seeing a very good a good company with Apple. Um, yeah. Let do you want to go through a couple of other stocks? Uh, kind of give them. What I want to give you guys to really see that boom. We'll give Nick 60 seconds. I wanted to plug in a stock ticker, analyze the company, and tell me yes or no he'd buy it right here. So you guys have been pumping in a lot of tickers. Uh, I see that coming out. I like this. You guys are very interactive. Let's plug a couple <laughs> in. Um, Nick, yep. tell you what, why, Nick, you said you had a couple you wanted to show. Why don't you show us two or three that you think are good or bad, and then we'll take everyone else's tickers and kind of plug them through. We'll do 15 or 20 of them real quick, uh, and, then, and yep. then show them how they can, they can use this themselves. Yeah, perfect. I'll quickly show uh, just, uh, for example, a very, very, very bad one, uh, which I would avoid at all costs. It's a company called uh, Waste Management. Uh, it takes a few seconds to load the data from online. Um, as you can see, it has a fundamental score of 15. It's 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 a mess actually, and even the, based on the valuation, it's uh, highly overvalued. Uh, if you look at the financial health of this um, this one, uh, what you'll see is that it's exactly the story I just told you: increasing net income, flat. Um, Flat uh, earnings. Uh, sorry, for flat. Uh, We're probably taxing your uh, your internet connection when you're broadcasting yeah, to the spreadsheet the at the same I'm time. Also, so also recording this uh, this webinar. Yeah, you got a lot going but, uh, on. Go ahead. 
Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So as you can see, profits stable, high around four. Uh, free cash flow low, getting even lower. This company is doomed. Don't invest in waste management. <laughs> okay. Um, another quickly, um, for example, another good one is Google. But oh, oh my, th my session expired. Mm. Google. So what you see is Google, good company, fundamentals are great. However, if you look at the valuation, it's valued around a thousand bucks. It's already trading at a price above that. It's overvalued. I would not invest in Google at this moment in time. So uh, what you're looking at, you've got you've got three valuations there. You've got an average yeah. estimate of nine ninety four, and then yeah. right there, that's that's the current share price as of as of today, eleven eighty six. Yeah. And then you're showing what percentage is overvalued, and then below that, you've got what price you would be willing to buy this stock. For, for a minimum yeah. twenty percent return, is that right? Yeah. So actually, that that's absolutely right, Ross. And that would mean that uh, Google need to to go down fifty percent before I'm uh, interested in buying this uh, company. Now, tell us so, about it. Says it says the estimate is unreliable. I think that's based on a percentage. Tell us what that means. Yeah. So they don't think yeah, it's yeah, bad yeah. data. No, no, no. That's true. The thing is, uh, like you, as as you can see here, uh, it just. Um, it's not that important. It just looks at the highest and the lowest uh, intrinsic value estimate. And if there's more than a 25% difference between those two, the estimate is said to be unreliable. So it means that uh, just be careful not to um, take the average too um, seriously because you know it's an average of extremes. So uh, that's actually what it says. So you're just saying the 994 uh, estimate because the difference between the 834 number and the 1120 is more than say 20% or so, that's why yeah. it's saying unreliable. But the intrinsic value yeah. numbers are still right on the money. Is that correct? Yeah, that's absolutely true. Okay, that's absolutely true. Yeah. So um, yeah, shall we take some uh, some tickers from the? the All right. Be careful. These guys got their stocks ready. All right. Let's go through yeah, a couple of them. Nice. I've seen a couple that have come in more than more than once. Do Nvidia, NVDA. For our friend Tracy. Yeah. So what we see, 68 score, uh, high, very um, different intrinsic value estimates. So it's difficult to uh, be sure about uh, the value of the of the company. Um, however, we do see that two of the valuation models are below um, the the current share price, way below current share price actually so I would be careful um, if we look at the fundamentals which we should have done at first actually because usually when you analyze stocks you first look for a great company and then you look at what it's trading for um, better, like Buffett said the classic quote uh, better to buy a good company at a fair price and a fair company at a great price. Um, yeah so as you can see return on equity bad uh, so let's just look at What's so bad about it? For example, look at the graphs. Look at the return equity graph. Let's see where it is. It's here. Well, as you can see, it's not the the reason why it says it's bad is because it has been negative, which means that um, Nvidia had some bad years before this, but now it's actually doing quite well again. Uh, so that's what what's so interesting about this. It, it just highlights the things that need some more attention. So if you actually look at the graph and the data, you can actually say, oh, okay, um, I understand why it shows that it's bad, but actually I, I uh, trust that NVIDIA will do good in the future. It's doing all right now, so I might consider buying it anyway, you know? So that, that's how, uh, yeah, how you can use the spreadsheet. Let's do some more. Uh, let's see where it is. Questions. Now it can't it can't do ETFs, right? Because there's really no underlying fundamentals to ETFs. Is that correct? True. True. That yeah. is true. It's, yeah. it's got to be it's a safe. stock. All right, they're yeah. beating me up. So one thing I recommended a couple nights ago, I talked about the turnaround opportunity with Radio Shack. Now, yep. RSH. Listen, guys, I, I'm good. I haven't checked it. I'm sure it's going to score poorly because we know what it's done <laughs> the last two years. 
But go ahead and plug it in. Let's see what let's see what we get. Remember, this is a turnaround, not really a value investment that we normally do. So, ooh, that's yeah. Eh. It's if we if we look at uh, um, it, it it it's it's pretty bad, yeah. But let's uh, look at it a bit more closely. Um, for example, return on equity for this year is minus twenty, um, or and which is obviously bad. Uh, well, look, let's see. I'm not. That familiar with the current uh, operations of Radio Shack, but let's see what it did. Um, maybe at the statements, you see that um, netto income went from 72 to minus. Yeah, so they're making a loss. Obviously, it would show that it's doing poorly at the moment. Um, however, if you do believe that it is a turnaround, um, for example, it says the growth rate for the next five years is relatively low. Uh, the thing is with turnarounds, it's difficult because uh, turnarounds are usually companies that are doing really bad at the moment, but you expect them to do really well in the future after they turn around. So yeah, at the moment, Radio Shack might be bad, but if the turnaround happens, it might turn out to be a great... Um, great investment anyway. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a great point to make out because as I've mentioned to you guys before, there are several reasons to buy stocks. A turnaround is like a JC Penny, a Radio Shack, something that was once great is now not great, but you're buying it hoping they come back. If it does, you make several hundred percent. This is really focused on if you want to be a value investor or if you want to be a growth stock guy, to find companies that are doing well right now because I think investing in turnarounds is a little bit more of an advanced topic, but let's put some of you guys' other ones in here. Some person mentioned, uh, Bao mentioned Las Vegas Sands LVS. Let's take a look at that. LVS. Okay. Um, yeah, what we see here is Las Vegas Sands casinos. Um, yeah, debt to equity, for example, is something which uh, I personally uh, put a lot of uh, emphasis on. Um, just because debt is risky, <laughs> debt is really risky. It uh, puts uh, the company in a in a difficult position uh, when the interest rates uh, fluctuate. Um, so let's see how it, what kind of debt equity ratio we're talking about. Um, here we see the debt equity. It's 1.5. It means that they have 50% more debt than they have equity. That's a dangerous position to be in. Uh, maybe they not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's a dangerous position to be in. Um, if we look at the return on equity, which is also an important factor, uh, Buffett uh, puts a lot of emphasis on it as well. Um, they have gone from minus, and they're now b slowly building it up. So it looks like they're uh, coming back. That they're um, getting better and better. Uh, the graphs will tell the same story, obviously. Um, turn on assets is increasing, turn on equity is increasing, net margin is increasing. So yeah, book value is fluctuating a bit, um, which is it might be a bit worrisome, but in general there's a, 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 an uptrend. So yeah, I'm not too... Uh, even though the, the score is uh, very low, um, you do see a, a, a uh, definite, uh, yeah, it, it's not doing too bad. So look at look at some higher quality stocks. Look at like a uh, Walgreens, WAG. See what that would, I'm guessing it's going to have a high score, but it's going to be overvalued, but I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah this, this, is, this is somewhat better. Um, the, the same, um, let's see. Uh, the E ratio. Um, if it says bad, it means that it's currently trading at a PE which is higher than average. So actually, what Ross said is true. Um, it's overvalued, uh, also based on a simple PE ratio, uh, which means that the price to earnings to growth ratio is also uh, influenced by that. So the uh, score is calculating both how good the company is and how good it is based on today's price, right? So the same stock, if it were trading at 30 bucks, the score would probably be higher. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Just uh, because uh, here it takes into account the P-E ratio, 
However, if you if you want to take that thing out of the equation, you simply uh, make it a zero, and you already see the you already see the score increase. Of course, you should be careful not to uh, tinker with it just so the score would fit uh, your um, well what you what you hope to find, so to say. Um, just I, what I would recommend is think about your strategy, uh, set the weights accordingly, and then stick to it. All right. Look at a couple other another bottom fishing stock I picked up was Gordman's G M A N. Let me know they they put a value on that because it's one again that had a temporary bad year, but is generally uh, higher. Yeah. So uh, what you see is a negative discount cash flow. Let's see how that happened. Yeah, free cash flow was negative for uh, last. Uh, yeah, since the last quarter, so um, that things like that really um, influence uh, the scoring of this system, obviously, because uh, it's, they, it, it draws in statements. It it, it looks uh, for, uh, like I said, value inf value investors look for great companies, and great companies uh, make a profit. So if a company is not making a profit or is having negative free cash flow, obviously it would give out a lower score. So that's uh, what you're seeing here. Yeah, so Gorman's is kind of a temporary one. What they did is they paid a huge special dividend of a couple bucks a share that took a positive year to a negative free cash flow, which is why it's showing up like that. So it's not, again, I mean, there, there's no one spreadsheet or tool that's going to find you every single potential variable. What we want to get is a base score, good good time to buy a stock, bad time to buy a stock. Um, and, and Brian asked, could you quickly define free cash flow? Brian, free cash flow is if you bought the whole company, you're the owner, what would you walk away with, right? So when a company says we had net income of, say, $5 per share, well, that includes the fact that they depreciated their office equipment by XX dollars, and they paid taxes, you know, and they, they, they've got amortization expenses. But if you're the owner, all you're looking at is how much cash came in, how much did I have to spend, what am I left with? That's free cash flow. So net income is more of an accounting number. Free cash flow is... Uh, total you brought in. The best way to think about it is like your 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 salary. Let's say you made fifty thousand dollars last year. After taxes and all, maybe you brought home thirty five thousand dollars. But your net income is what you report to the IRS. So that's after you deduct, uh, you know, student loan or mortgage interest. After you deduct, you know, child, whatever deductions you've got available. So free cash flow just just total what's left. Net income is the accounting figure. And and they also say that the PE did you did you bring the weight to zero on the PE ratio? Uh, yeah, at the moment I did. That was at uh, one. I mean, this this thing it, it was at one, which is low, uh, which means it doesn't have a big influence on the score. That's because this is about fundamentals, and it's not uh, necessarily about price. So that's why I assigned the low value to that uh, to those particular um, factors. I got uh, you. We can look at one. Um, of my favorite stocks at the moment. It's a um, small cap um, stock with a unique patented um, product. It actually sells uh, female condoms to um, <laughs> specifically third, yeah, the third world countries. And they have uh, huge uh, clients, which are actually governments and NGOs. Uh, the reason why their stock price uh, has plummeted there recently is because um, yeah, the earnings, they missed the earnings uh, analysts expected. However, the thing is, their, in their income is very lumpy because the, um, the spending patterns of those governments are uh, very irregular. So this year, th there wasn't a decrease in demand, it's just that the government of Brazil is planning to buy uh, another batch next year instead of this year. Uh, so actually this offered a really good opportunity, as you can see it's according to uh, the, the estimates, it's uh, significantly undervalued at the moment, 83% uh, upside potential. Um, maximum purchase price for 20% per year would be $7.70 and it's currently at $6.80 uh, below that. So it's, it's an interesting point and also if you look at the score, it's, really, it's a really, really good score. Uh, the only bad thing that is highlighted at the fundamentals is the asset turnover change, which means, um, 
yeah, the amount of sales they have with respect to their assets. Uh, so it means they had a decrease in sales. And yeah, like I just explained, that was due to the lumpy government spending patterns and not due to um, um, yeah, not due to fundamental problems with the company. So it's actually at a really interesting point at the moment. And uh, yeah, a good company with a, a competitive advantage because they are actually yeah sort of have a monopoly on this, uh, this very special market. It's a really interesting market. Now tell me about other countries. Can this spreadsheet do stocks that are not U.S. listed? Uh, at the moment, you know the thing is. It, it, at the moment, it works for U.S. listed companies only. Um, the thing is, uh, the data comes from uh, online sources, and um, it is just um, data for U, U, U.S. listed companies is just widely available. I mean, you have Yahoo Finance, which is a great resource for financial data. Uh, not many companies offer that amount of um, of really available data on the internet. Um, however, I am definitely thinking about uh, creating a, a spreadsheet which is also uh, which also works for different countries. However, that means that I have to create one spreadsheet per country, which is a lot of work. Uh, so it is definitely something I keep in mind for the future, but it's difficult to decide which countries to focus on then. All right, let's do let's do two more. Man, my man Bobby's got a couple of stocks he wants to look at. Let's do two more. I'll tell them about the special offer you've got if they want to have this used for themselves, and then we can look at some more stocks. Uh, CHTP, perfect, and then POZN. Therapeutics. Yeah, so it's uh, currently retrieving the data uh, online. You see loading, standing here. Sometimes it takes one second. Sometimes it takes a bit more. It, like uh, Ross just said, my internet speed is not uh, optimal at the moment. Yeah, we're we're streaming our boy Nick here all the way from the Netherlands and taxing him with yeah. broadcasting his spreadsheet. So uh, don't take yeah. the slowness on that. Yeah. So what you see happen here is um, the the it, it has been able to retrieve all the data except for the current ratio, ratio, which kind of uh, messes up the score at this point. <laughs> this is interesting. It all gives zero for the, let's see, probably it's just very small. Uh, let's see what this is. What is this? Let's look at this statement. Oops. Yeah, so we've got the financial statements here. Income, net income, four years of negative income. So four years of negative free cash flow, I'm guessing. Um, so that's why the, the the intrinsic value estimates aren't really saying anything because you know when the, when the the PE valuation uh, encounters minus uh, net. Yeah, net income, which is minus, uh, it just goes to zero because it makes no sense to have a value of mi a minus value. Yeah, well, that makes sense. I mean, if a company if a company's losing money, you know, we really don't want to. It's not really what yeah, we want to own, right? We're we're in the, we're in the business yeah, of making no, money. Absolutely, that's definitely the thing because, it, like I said, it's it's based on uh, value investing philosophy. Uh, you want to find great companies that are making money, and this company definitely is not make, is making is not making any money. So the other one was POZN. Yep. Okay. Bobby has pulled some small caps out of here for us. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, 245 million. That's a small cap indeed. Yeah, so it's still okay. Brought in some data. Also in the drug manufacturer, it's also um, the same sort of industry as the last uh, company, uh, pharmaceuticals. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a it's an interesting industry, definitely. Um, let's see, return on equity. Look at the graph. It also says it always says a lot. Um, 
price this is return on asset in the negative, return on equity in the negative, net margin plummeting, book value going down, not. Not a, not a good deal. I mean, basically, with these, without it, without them having to learn them too. I mean, with the graphs, if they're all over the place, that's a tough stock to invest in. I mean, if it's if it's if yeah, it's dying, if it if it's flipping all over the place, that's the ones you either get lucky or or you get really unlucky and lose money. I mean, when you find a quality company, these lines are much more regular, they're more contained. You get a much better average. When you got a company going from a hundred times earnings to negative fifty times earnings, yeah, you, you know, yeah. it's it, that's a pretty. It, it's just that's why pharmaceuticals are kind of can be tough unless you get a Pfizer or something more, more um, uh, consistent. But Nick, let yeah. me let me show them before everyone before everyone has to go. Let me show them your spreadsheet and, and the offer you've got on. Then we can take some more questions. You guys don't go away. Um, let me take over the screen so I can show them this. Yep, um, perfect. But what he's what what Nick's done is. He's got this offer on his site, and you can go to his site, valuespreadsheet.com, and, and you'll see his prices. And when I, I reached out to Nick and said, look, you've got a great spreadsheet. Can I use it? I think some of my guys might be interested in it. You know, Let me try it out for a while. I've been using it for months. It's fantastic. Um, the spreadsheet does, as you've seen, a lot of a lot of everything. right? It analyzes stocks with one click. You don't have to input any data. It's got the three valuation methods. It gives you the ranking based on not only the quality of the company, but also the price. And without saying, without being a red light, green light system, essentially if you pull up a stock and it ranks an 85, and you pull up another, it ranks at 35, the 85 is going to be a much more quality company. You have a lot less risk and a lot more upside of those type of companies. The cool thing about the spreadsheet is you can use it on a PC, you can use it on a Mac, on a tablet, an iPad, an iPhone, a Samsung, anything, because the way he set this up is all you've got to do is set up a free Gmail account. So you just go to Google, you know, gmail.com, make a free account, or maybe you've already got one, and it links into your Google Drive. Okay, So it's all web-based. You can access it from anywhere. So the cool thing about that is you can download the Google Drive app on an iPad, on a tablet, on a Mac, on anything, and access the spreadsheet instantly and automatically at any time. You could even save multiple variations for it if you want one that's set up for growth stocks, one that's set up for value stocks, one that's set up for several different things, and you've all, you'll be able to access those from anywhere. So it's really, really cool. I love the way you've done that. 